The Three Caballeros is a very, very strange movie. This is the movie you watch if you're high, essentially. It's incredibly strange, but you kind of love it, but then you kind of hate it because there's so much missed potential, and we're going to discuss why. Three Caballeros doesn't have much history behind it. Basically, the last film they did, Salidos Amigos, did pretty well, and, you know, they're still during war, so might as well make another one. This time, instead of just focusing on South America in general, it just focuses on the countries of Brazil and Mexico, even though Mexico is part of North America. The premise of the movie is that Donald's birthday in all of South America, and I guess Mexico, because like I said, Mexico is not part of South America, he gets presents for all these countries, which is mostly just Brazil and Mexico, as I might already mentioned, and he's like, wow, they had a great birthday party! And at first he gets films about stuff, like ones about a penguin that that doesn't like the Antarctica and decides to sail all the way to Galapagos Island, and I like it. It's also narrated by Winnie the Pooh himself, so it's just pretty. He has a pretty good, nice voice, and he this is of course the second appearance in a Disney movie. It's a fun short story, but yeah, it, that's all it is really. The next short film, which is about a kid, is flying donkey, and he enters the, into a race with the donkey. And that's about it. He fails to get his reward because the donkey flies away. And that's about it. Nothing much to say there, but it is, I guess, kind of funny. Oh, and that's the end of the film because Donald ran out of real, I guess. And, yeah, that, that's all it for the short films. The rest of the movie is just about Donald meeting with the other caballeros, which means friends, I believe. Oh, in case you're wondering, a caballero is apparently a gentleman in Mexico, just to let you know. And these presents are his bird friends, I guess. The one guy from Brazil, who's Jose from the last film, we couldn't, didn't forget. Did you forget about that? I hope you didn't forget. And the other guy is a rooster who loves to shoot pistols because his name is Panchito Pistols. Yeah, that's a great name. This guy quite literally likes to shoot guns. He's a Mexican rooster, and, and he's the last Caballero. He's introduced in this film. And these characters are kind of popular, despite the fact that they really only appear in this one film. Way later down the line, they would appear in a lot more media, including a ride. But we'll get to that near the end of the video. And the song they sing is kind of iconic. You, you already know it, alright? And it's good. And they, what they do is they go into pan-painted backgrounds of live-action people, and they dance around. Now, Donald Duck, he'll see every woman there and be like, I want to make love to you. I can't do Donald Duck. I wish I could. I could do Daffy Duck. So instead of exploring the culture, they're in, on a flying carpet there, a Mexican-style carpet. I actually have one of those in my in back of my car. Donald just sees stuff like, wow, there's a nice lady. I like to do it. And that's the most of the movie. I mean, at one point, Don Duck's trying to sexually assault women at the beach. I said one kiss on the cheek, and you're trying to sexually assault me? At one point, Don thinks a face in the sky is hot. Like, what is this problem? Are you cheating on Daisy Duck there, Donald? In case you're wondering, the movie just keeps going and going in this weird fever dream. And I guess it's kind of interesting to look at, but this is the main premise is Don trying to fuck a flower face. It's just really weird, more than anything. I remember watching this movie as a kid, and by the time he gets to the ending, I was just incredibly confused about what the hell's even going on. It's like, did I make that up? Did that actually happen? It's one of the most bizarre experiences. Even as an adult, I feel the same way. And then all of a sudden, it goes back to the very end. The last ten seconds, Donald's in a bull costume, and then he gets exploded by the other caballeros, and he just dies, I guess. Like, look at all that fireworks. Like, well, I guess he gets saved in the end. I guess he doesn't die. And that's Donald Duck's birthday. I guess he got smoked some joints during his birthday celebration. You can imagine the rest of the movie. Who the hell knows? I would say most of this movie is good. The first live action mixing is fine. The first time Donald's like, okay, he's in love with this one woman. Then they kept over and over again. The joke kind of runs its course. And unfortunately, they don't rely on the other two new characters they introduce in this movie, which are the main reasons why this movie remains popular. People like the characters of Jose and Banjito because they're really fun characters. And unfortunately, they didn't get to share the spotlight until way later. This is one of those movies that, after a while, you just turn it off, and that's basically how it is. Second half, I guess the last third kind of ruins the movie for you, me at least, because it just gets really elaborate. Around this scene is when you basically want to give up, because it just gets ridiculous. And you might like it, but I personally do not. Apparently in the 1950s, the movie was edited down for a TV release on The Wonderful World of Disney. The shortened version sounded actually a lot better, because this movie could really use that. Fortunately, critics did not care for this movie, and I think it did. Eh, for the box office, but it didn't really cost that much to make, calling it kind of uh, a bunch of white noise, essentially. The characters like a lot of other Disney characters reappeared in the House of Mouse, but they sang a song together that Don Duck's in a dress for some reason. Don't ask why. 
There's actually a short in 1960 called the Two Happy Caballeros, which doesn't feature Panchito. I guess he got kicked out of the band. Oh, yeah, by the way, you know it's not this in the actual movie. They Three Caballeros are a band in pretty much every other version of their appearances, in case you're wondering. In case you're wondering, Jose appears in a lot more properties than Panchito, but not by much. He even got a cameo in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. What a great film. Recommend watching it. He even stole M Mickey Mouse's girlfriend once. I mean, that's a high act to fall. Be careful if Mickey Mouse doesn't sue your ass. And they appeared in that weird Mickey Mouse cartoon. It's pretty uh, bizarre. It doesn't really have the typical Disney humor, but that's why a lot of people like it. And yeah, you can tell these characters appear a lot if, in Mickey Mouse products because, well, there are Mickey Mouse related characters. They even appeared in CGI in this thing called Mickey and the Roaster Racers. They don't look very good in CGI though, let's be honest. Their best reappearance was in DuckTales 2017, because that show is amazing. I'm currently watching it, and I highly recommend you watch it too. And the episode they're in is also really good, so I recommend watching that, because this show is amazing. I'm not kidding, if you have a Disney Plus subscription, please watch this show. It's great. In 2018, they actually got their own TV show called The Legend of the Three Caballeros, for some reason dressed up like that. I don't know why. I have not seen this show, but apparently Donald and the other two inherit a thing that was Donald's grandfather. I don't know how they the other two inherited. They're not from the same nationality, but it looks really weird. From what I've seen, it's just okay. Didn't get enough ratings to get a second season, though. And animation-wise, it didn't look as good as the DuckTales show I just previously saw. It's only 13 episodes long, so I guess you want to watch it, go ahead. Apparently, it's serialized, and it stars the three Caballeros, so there you go. At Disney World in Coronado Springs, there's a place called Panchitos, which is just a gift shop. Honestly, this, what I've seen from this resort and videos, it looks kind of eh. It's Mexican theme, but there's light, it's very light theming, theming, and the most you get is, well, Panchito has his own store here. There's not a whole lot going on, though. A pretty cool thing is at the All-Star Music Resort, which is a pretty neat, low-budget resort at Disney. There is a giant pool in the shape of a guitar, and in the middle, we see the three caballeros shooting water pretty cool. There is a actual ride called the Grand Fiesta Tour in the Mexican Pavilion at Epcot at Disney World, which is a ride that is kind of underrated because you all well, don't know it's there. You get this tiny sign on the outside of this Aztec temple, and the inside you see a gift shop and a restaurant. And if you look around, you see a ride entrance, which is kind of weird, but I kind of like it at the same time. The ride is basically Donald's touring Mexico, and Jose and Panchito are trying to find him so they can do their tour number. And it's a pretty fun ride. It's a nice, quiet log flume with a bunch... Even though it's a sc kind of a screen ride, it's a nice one to look around. And plus, it was not nice, nice architecture here all around. Hey, that's a temple from Sonic Adventure! And it's not all screens, as we got Small World animatronics here, which is pretty neat, actually. I know some people don't like Small World, but I like Small World, alright? This ride's almost better than the movie, because Donald here is doing things that isn't just simping over women randomly. It's him doing touristic things in Mexico, which makes a lot more sense than just simping over w random women. Donald Duck, you have a girlfriend. Her name's Daisy. And near the end, you get to see animatronic versions of the three Caballeros, which is pretty neat. At one point in time, they weren't there for a refurbishment, and these guys are incredibly old. In fact, they've actually toured the world. So these animatronics are from 1971, they've been around the world, and now they're in Epcot forever. And yeah, they're pretty cool. I like them a lot. And that's all I gotta say about Three Caballeros. I think I talked more about its mixed media rather than the film itself. Three Caballeros, while a fun film, unfortunately doesn't really do much more than what it really does. If that makes any sense, does it? No, not really. Nothing I say makes sense, and that's the thing. Three Caballeros is a step up from Saludos Amigos. But at the same time, it falls short in some ways. Mostly near the end. The ending for this movie sucks. It could have been B tier if it was just slightly edited. But unfortunately, it's in the C tier. We are at a point where we are just not having any villains. And you'll find that in the next couple films too. Because the package era doesn't really have a lot of villains because of the way it's structured. This is all the songs that we have. There was a couple in this movie, and I've ranked them all. In fact, you can see them going ranging all the way from F and all the way to A tier. Wow, look at that. That A tier is finally being used. So at the bottom we have You Belong to My Heart. It's not a bad song, but the scene it's associated with is so bad that I had to put it in F tier. Sorry, floating head woman. And then in E tier we have Ois Quanadas de Yaya. I believe I said that right. Hopefully I did. I hope I didn't offend anybody from Brazil there. And, yeah, it's too, it's long and it's kind of forgettable. It's, 
also the same goes with La Lingo. They're more interesting to look at than listen to. And um, yeah. Then in D tier we have Have You Been to Bai and Mexico, both of which work and they're a bit more memorable than the other two, so that's why they're there. Then in C tier we have Bayou. I think I said that right. And it's nice. It's a nice sound song, but nothing too special. And then we go all the way up to A tier. We have the main title track, The Three Caballeros, which plays throughout the entire movie, basically, in score form, the opening credits, and yeah, it's a pretty iconic song. It's been redone multiple times. You know, it is funny that one of the lyrics is reggae, Caballeros. That's what, that's I'm not joking. That's one of the lyri- lyrics. And they changed that. They also, there's a lyric about them talking about a fine Latin baby who says, yes, no, or maybe, and I guess that's a, not a good thing. It's more of a joke than anything else, so it's not really offensive to me, but I can see why somebody might get offended by that. And yeah, that's about it for this film. Bye-bye. If you like me or you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. This is Musical Now. Bye-bye.